So this was your discussion question. And we said, I'm just giving you some random information about a value function. And we talked last time about what this value function looks like. And then I wanted you to think, you know, make this a little bit, not too, too much of a brain teaser exercise, but a little bit of a, a thought exercise so that we can start understanding what's going on here. Review, make sure that you're paying attention, that you remember what we talked about regarding the value function, and so on and so forth. And remember, in case it's not obvious, the value function was that S-shaped thing that we talked about for gains and losses. Okay. So we have here, you said, I gave you some information. And remember what we talked about regarding the pluses and minuses. Obviously, the pluses just rep represent gains. The minuses just rep represent losses. So I gave you some information about a gain of 2, a loss of 3, a gain of 4, and a loss of 5. And then asked, and I, I chose my words carefully because obviously we can't know exactly for sure what our value function looks like. But I said, you know, by best guess based on what we talked about in class, what would be your best guesses for these numbers here? So what was your best guess for a loss of two? What would be the value of that? Yeah, we talked about this S-shaped curve wasn't actually symmetric about the origin because we said that we feel, you know, as a rule of thumb or on average, we feel losses twice as much as we feel gains. So that would suggest that, you know, rather than just doing a pure reflection, we've got to reflect that and then multiply it by two. So we can say, well, if we feel, you know, a value of five from a gain of two, then we must feel or we probably most likely feel, if we had to guess, a minus 10 value from a loss of 2. We can apply that same logic to get the rest of the numbers, right? So if, a, if the value of a loss of 3 is negative 16, then we can guess that the value of a gain of 3 is what? Yeah, we're just going in the opposite direction, right? That if when we're going from gains to losses, we're multiplying by 2, when we're going from losses to gains, we're just dividing by 2, obviously. Okay. And changing the pluses to minuses, and vice versa. Okay. So this one would be 8. If the value of plus 4 is 10, then the value of minus 4 is negative 20. And if the value of a loss of 5 is negative 22, then the value of a gain of 5, we can guess would be good. So then the second part of the question is that are these numbers consistent with the value function that we described in class? Well, to some degree, if this is what you did, if these are the numbers that you filled in, it kind of has to be at least in one way because you used what the value function looked like to even fill in these numbers in the first place, right? So we know that at least in this way, with the, the losses being felt twice as much as gains, by construction, this matches what we did in class, do these numbers fit the shape of the value function more generally compared to what we did in class? Anybody? Bueller? <laughs> Bueller? Oh, yes! I'm usually feeling like I'm too old for you guys to get anything, so the fact that you even responded to that at all makes me happy. So we can think about, you know, what, what does our value function look like, right? We said, well, that's this S-shaped curve. We've got our gains and we've got our losses. We know that we constructed something that's steeper in losses than in gains. The other salient feature of the value function is that we're risk-averse in gains and risk-loving in losses, right? Or, graphically speaking, concave down and gains and concave up in losses. That's the other thing that we can check, right? And, you know, if we were to plot these numbers, think about the numbers on the gains, right? We've got 5, 8, 10, and 11. So if we were to think about what that looks like, if we have plus 2, plus 3, plus 4, and plus 5, 
to say, you know, does it make sense for five, eight, ten, and eleven? That's you know, that's looking pretty good, right? And we can see more generally that you know, without even drawing this out, we could say if this is going to be consistent with something that's concave down, we would expect the value numbers the to get closer together as our gains become larger, right? Just because we see our curve flattening out. And that's just another way of saying, you know, that marginal value or the, you know, the extra value that we get from one more unit of gain is decreasing as we go further out in the gains spectrum. Well, from zero to five is an incremental five, from five to eight is an incremental three, from eight to 10 is an incremental two, and from 10 to 11 is an incremental one. Right. So we said, oh yeah, that is consistent with the shape that we talked about. And then not surprisingly on the losses side of things, given that we literally did that reflection and multiplied by two, this has to be consistent with this part of the the value function here as well, right? You can think about the numbers. Again, if we look at the losses, we've got negative 10, negative 16, negative 20, and negative 22. And we could do the same thing, and we say that incremental value, or that incremental, in this case, pain that we're feeling is getting smaller as we go further out. And you could plot the numbers in a similar fashion and see that, you know, you're going to see the same shape down here. <coughs>